can you shout at Lego and have it record that as sound? Oi, can you hear me? Now that I've built these admittedly ugly but functional speakers out of Lego, it did get me wondering, can you make a microphone out of Lego? After all, what is a microphone if not just a small speaker, but in reverse? In this episode of building things out of Lego that really shouldn't be, we're gonna yell at some Lego until we have a crappy microphone. So what exactly is a microphone? Well, in my speaker video, I showed this simple coil slapped onto some masking tape. And now we have a membrane that can vibrate with the coil. If we connect it up to a standard 3.5 millimeter jack cable, now we can stick it into my laptop. And if I introduce a powerful magnet nearby and then record me testing, shouting at it, testing one, two. Uh, nothing happens because my dumb computer thinks this damn thing is a speaker. Here's Scarlet Fire for you audiophiles to enjoy at uh, the quality that you're used to. Okay, so to force my silly laptop to take the signal in rather than spitting it out, let's use this simple audio dongle. Now if we stick our cable into the mic port, it'll make my laptop realize that I want this thing to be a microphone instead of a speaker. So now if I tap 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 on the paper, you can see it's being recorded as this sort of pounding signal. And if I shout at this piece of paper, we get a barely recognizable signal that sort of sounds like a human voice. If it was recorded during a hailstorm or something. Well, this sounds disgusting, but at least we have a starting point. Let's find a way to mount a better membrane so it can vibrate nicely. This thing with the rubber nipples looks like it'll hold some cardboard easily enough. And if I build this mount thing, then I can have two of these pieces squeezed together and we can sandwich a membrane between them. Then we'll need a frame for it. This'll do. Now, to generate a signal, we need some powerful magnets. Let's use this neodymium magnet, and maybe another, and another, and another. Yeah, that should do. Now, if I pass an axle through it, we can mount it onto the frame here. Next, we'll need a membrane. First, let's size up the frame. And using a paper plate, we can trace out something that'll fit, and then cut it out. And lastly, we'll need the voice coil. I'm using this thin Technic wheel and wrapping some thin 32 gauge wire around it. This should allow me to concentrate the coil close to the magnets. After it's secured with some blue tack, we can mount it to the membrane using a central axle and fasten it to the other side using another Technic wheel. Perfect, now we slide her into place and adjust the positioning so that it aligns with the magnets. Now, in theory, if we shout at it, it'll cause the membrane to vibrate near the magnets, creating a minuscule fluctuation in voltage. To raise this mic to the right height, let's make a nice little stand for it. Now we can pop this dude on top, and have something that vaguely resembles a desktop microphone. Now, at this point, I must confess something. I know sweet f all about microphones. And this is where I'd love to co-create with you. If you know how to build these things, I'd love to hear from you in the comments. Pretty much all I know is that while speakers require a reasonable current to drive them, microphones on the other hand require a really tiny voltage in the order of millivolts to generate an appreciable signal. So I really just went into this project just kind of hoping that one of these designs would produce a recognizable signal. Okay, well, let's test this first attempt. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Okay, looks like there's a tiny signal. Let me boost it a bit. Anything. Yeah, sorta. Very fuzzy though. I suspect the coil just isn't producing enough of a signal to separate it from the noise. So to boost the voltage produced, I'm gonna use this ridiculously thin 38 gauge wire. I really hate this stuff. It's like working with strands of hair. But I got there eventually, and it allows me to wrap many more turns of wire, which in theory should boost the voltage significantly. After remounting it to the membrane and adjusting it, it's time for a test drive. Testing, test 
Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Hmm, the signal looks a little more robust. Tiny Technic toy trucks travel to take the tricky turntable track. Oh hey, it doesn't sound good, but we can finally hear a voice. What if we use some noise reduction? <laughs> kind of sounds like we're underwater. Too much bass. What if we reduce the size of the membrane to bring in more treble? Does this make a difference? Tiny Technic toy trucks travel along the tricky turntable track. Yeah, kind of the same, and in fact, I think less of a signal. Okay, well, what about the opposite? What if we use a massive membrane? This is the Lego speaker I made in a previous video. I bet this can collect a load of sound waves. Brick by brick, check one, two. Testing this Lego microphone just for you. Ugh, yuck. Loads of noise. And of course, even more bass. This isn't gonna cut it. Now, there is another type of microphone that I'm gonna experiment with in the future called a ribbon microphone. This should produce a much more natural sound, but it's a bit more complex and I just need more time with it. So for now, you know what I think we need? Something that's totally suspended so that it can vibrate freely. And also, not too big, so we get some more high frequency response. Let's start with another frame that we can mount on it. Then we'll need a membrane. This Technic wheel hub is perfect because then we can attach these elastic bands to it. Now if I pop some of these pins into the frame, then we can mount this wheel hub to it. Awesome, now we have a nice bouncy membrane mount. And behind it, we'll secure this neodymium ring magnet. Now, if I take our voice coil and pass this axle through it, and then pass the axle through the central hole in the membrane mount, make a few minor adjustments, well now we have our new and improved microphone. I intentionally mounted this coil some distance from the membrane to see if that might cause it to produce a greater movement when the membrane is vibrated. This might be a dumb idea, but it made sense to me at the time. To help capture the sound waves, I cut out another piece of thin cardboard and mounted it to the wheel hub. And once again, stuck the whole thing onto our tripod. Alrighty, how does she sound? Tiny Technic toy trucks travel to take the tricky turntable track. Well, the signal is certainly much clearer. Tiny Technic toy trucks travel to take the tricky turntable track. Eh, not bad. And what if we use a little noise reduction? Tiny Technic toy trucks travel to take the tricky turntable track. Hmm, even better. Okay, so it's a little tiny, but to be honest, Compared to what we had previously, I'm actually stunned at how well it turned out. I'll call this a success. And if we use a little bit of noise cancellation, we get this kind of output, which actually sounds pretty damn good to me, I think. I'm sure there's an awful lot more I can do to refine this and make it sound a little better. And I would love to hear from you guys if you have any other suggestions to improve this design. I'm sure with your help, we can make this thing sound genuinely good. Well, thank you so much for watching. And if you like this kind of thing, please feel free to like it. Oh yeah, and by the way, in case any of you are wondering if this microphone can also be a speaker... Uh, yeah, a very tinny one. Thanks everyone, take care.